hello. So I just thought I would give you guys a rundown of exactly the setup I use for my GoPro that I rear when I'm riding and how I record footage and all the components involved and also my audio setup and my comm setup. So to start, I have my GoPro. It came in this case. There it is. For settings, I use 1080 and 30 FPS and super wide, or I think it's called super view. The standard is for the GoPro to come with a 32 gigabyte card. I'm pretty sure I have a 64 gigabyte card that I ordered with it. And that wasn't enough for me to be confident about footage runtime that I can store on here for longer days. So I actually purchased an 128 gigabyte SD card. I recommend getting those directly through GoPro or directly through um, SanDisk. There's a lot of scams on Amazon. And even if the reviews are high, it's a lot of people who just don't know that they're being scammed and there's really not the amount of storage. They just switch out the stickers. If it looks super cheap, it's probably not the right thing. The batteries for the GoPro, I use the Enduro batteries. They're white instead of blue. That's how you tell the difference. Uh, I actually have four Enduro batteries and two regular batteries. That might seem like overkill, but for long days or trips where you don't have the ability to um, charge easily, it's good to just not have to worry about it. I like writing on them with the numbers so that it's easy to tell uh, which one's which. The little SD card goes in there and it also charges right out of there. So I really like this camera. Another way to save battery is to turn the brightness all the way down to 10%. Just a tip, uh, it's really helpful. And I would say that one Enduro battery gets me an hour and a half to two hours of, of runtime. So that usually is enough to get me through a hair scramble. They are temperature affected. So the colder it is, the worse it's going to do, which is why like at Stonyford, it didn't last as long as I would hope it did, but also the race was really long. So that's the GoPro setup. Um, the GoPros will come with probably one of these, which are just kind of universal and used everywhere. Uh, and also an extra connector. I would also recommend make sure that you charge the GoPro safely. It has a, the batteries have like a maximum capacity. It says 4.4 volts is the limited volt, the limit of the charge voltage on these. So if you use like a computer charger, you might fry them. I have done that before, but you can also bring them back from the dead. The charger that I use to bring them back from the dead and also just to charge them more easily is the dual charger. I really recommend it, especially if you're doing long trips or long rides where you need to charge multiple batteries overnight. You can't like afford to plug in the GoPro, wait, unplug it, plug in the next battery and wait, and so on and so forth. So this has been a lifesaver. When I ride, I keep the GoPro batteries in the box uh, and then you can just change them out and you don't have to worry about them getting damaged. If you are going on a really long ride, I store the other SD card in a little Ziploc bag. I just fold it up into a paper towel because they're tiny. So it's not the fanciest setup and it doesn't look the nicest, but I don't have to worry about it getting damaged, just shoving it in there with all the other, all the other crap that's in there. I highly recommend getting the GoPro subscription if you plan on regularly filming. These files are massive, especially if you're filming in 2K, which I almost never do. Oh, 2.7K, I guess. If you're filming in 2.7K, they're gonna be even larger. So, what I do is I have the subscription, all my files go onto the cloud with GoPro, and then I can only pull down the batch that I want to edit with. And then once I'm done with that batch, I can either put those files onto an external hard drive. I have a four terabyte hard drive I use to just store all my footage. Um, but if you don't have that, uh, then basically you can delete the files from your system, but they still exist on the cloud. It also is an automatic upload. So once I plug this in, if I've connected it to my Wi-Fi, it will recognize the system and just start automatically uploading files. So I, I really do recommend that. And I like that subscription. For my helmet setup, there's racing and casually riding. Unfortunately, for any AMA sanctioned event, you cannot use anything mounted to your helmet, like a camera. You can sometimes get away with it. 
like during an enduro, especially on like the second or third lap, they won't catch you or care. But just to be safe, especially for a hair scramble, I wear the chest mount. Um, it's about here on me. This is the Amazon Basics one. Uh, it's cheaper than the one GoPro sells, and I am a little ashamed. It's it's literally a knockoff, a ripoff of the GoPro one. Um, this piece also comes with it. Just be aware, sometimes there's manufacturing defects. I had to shave off plastic in order for that piece to slide in when I got it, but it works great, and I've never had issues with the camera slipping out. Um, just like with the regular helmet setup, the camera just slides in here. The unfortunate thing about using the camera with the chest mount is that if you want it, I, I recommend putting that extra little piece in here, the same one I have on the front of the helmet. If you want the camera when you're sitting to capture a lot of stuff, there's no way to avoid it kind of being behind the handlebars. So the handlebars are gonna come up about halfway into your shot. It's not the best, but that's what it is. Uh, having it straight up and down or a little bit tipped back will get you that optimal angle when sitting. If you know you stand most of the time, I recommend, especially with that second piece, tilting it way back because when you stand, you're, lean, you're leaning forward. There's a sacrifice either way because if you lean it way back when you're standing, when you sit, you'll be looking kind of just up at the sky. If you sit over half the time, then you'll get those sitting shots, but once you stand, you'll pretty much be looking down at your seat or at the gas tank. So it is what it is. I'm sure there's racers out there with AMA events that have a better setup. I know I've seen people who have it like right under the helmet. So the helmet comes down into the shot, but you get a better view. I personally am a little hesitant to try that because I'm worried with how much I look down that my helmet would knock the camera over. So that's my racing setup. Also, one thing I will say about the chest mount, I was worried about it chafing or being too tight um, with my chest protector and my camelback already but it wasn't. And I put it on, of course, over my chest protector, but underneath my camelback. So that's the order chest protector, chest mount with the GoPro, and then my camelback when racing. Okay, so for my helmet, I have the Sherwo motorcycle helmet chin strap mount. Um, this piece comes with the GoPro, this extra connector. It does not come with this. So you want that extra connector because it allows for the extension so that you can tip the camera back. If you just get the chin mount and you don't have that little extra piece that typically comes with the GoPro, you can find them on Amazon and I think you can order the same piece off of GoPro. But basically when you're riding, your helmet's actually pointed down. So now your camera's pointing the right way. Of course, you can mess with this angle depending on how much of the handlebars and the tank you want in the shot. But I like mine to be pretty up because I want people to see what I'm riding on, not just like looking down at my bike. This is the one with the elastic, and I think it says that in the description. It just clips on uh, with two clips here and here, and it will stay in the center. It doesn't move around. This will never tighten down enough so that the camera is impossible to move. When I'm riding, the way I check that I've started recording is I, I usually pull my helmet down and then push this down and I can, that's enough for me to see that the screen lights up once I've hit the record button. And then I can pull it up, pretty much know that wherever it stops, that's that angle I want it at, and start riding. When I'm done, it's the same thing. Pull my helmet down, push the record button, and push it forward quickly, and you'll see it saying shutting down, and that's how you know. Otherwise, if you start to forget, you'll think you're recording, and you're really not. So I use that as a fail-safe system, and it seems to work. Okay, so one thing that's really important for me is my little foam housing that I put the camera in. I think it's called the VGSION. I'm not sure how to say that, but it's all letters together. Windslayer foam housing off of Amazon. I think it costs about $9, $9.50. What it does is it just slides in here. It will kind of get cracks and stuff after a while but it's not the most expensive thing. It's literally a piece of foam. This accomplishes two things. It pretty much kills all wind noise. It also, what I think is even better about it is it acts as both a dirt resistant layer 
And also, it allows you to like tip the camera back on the helmet and not worry about scratching the screen, although I do have screen protectors on the GoPro. You can see one of them's cracked. That's the protector, not the actual screen. It also allows me to take the helmet, take the camera off the helmet and like set it down and on a rock or something during lunch or if I'm filming by hand, you know, take it on and off, accidentally drop it and I'm not gonna break the camera. Okay, so just as a note, I am filming this little audio section with the GoPro. Uh, couldn't film anything else with the GoPro because I was showing off the GoPro. I think I'm filming in 4K right now. So for the comms that we use, we use the Senna SMH10 dual motorcycle Bluetooth headsets. So that's what the box looks like. Pretty sure we ordered this off of Amazon. It comes in a two pack. We have four of these. They just clip into the helmet. They do get a little dirty, just wear and tear over time, but they work great. We like to mark them on the back with dots, or you can also use whiteout, and that way we can tell them apart. You can connect up to four of these together. And then you're ready to go. You just turn it on. Hello. I don't know if you heard that. It says hello when you turn it on and goodbye every time you turn it off. It can also connect to your phone. You can set that up just using Bluetooth pairing on your phone. You can play music. I've never done it. Um, you can also uh, connect automatically to another rider by just pressing once, twice, or three times. And there's really easy instructions that come with the Senna headsets that explain how to do that. It just charges out of that point, port right there. But yeah, we love these things. Uh, depending on the shape of your helmet, sometimes it's too thick on the bottom to clamp it with the little screws that they give you uh, for this piece that it's mounted to. So sometimes you have to actually use the sticky that they send instead. It's like a it's like a really strong adhesive. So pretty much once that goes on the helmet, it's not coming off. But I'm okay with that with my helmet because that's how mine was and other people are too. But it's just a personal preference thing. Just something to keep in mind. For audio, usually when I'm in a video, the only way I pick up my audio is by talking to someone that I'm riding with and the GoPro will pick it up. But my dad decided for his sake, he wanted to capture both his own voice and my voice through actual separate headsets. So what that looks like is this whole setup right here. Um, so this is, there's two microphones that come off of this, and this is the Power to Wise Professional Grade 2 Lavalier Clip-On Microphones. So it's, it has a splitter as well with it. So there's one, the little mic, that's the Senna mic, that's this other recorder mic. And then it's connected to all this cable right here. Uh, and this is just the Alex Tech protector wire which just kind of unfurls and goes around the wire. You can kind of see it there. That's really helpful. You can see the splitter here, same kit, which goes into the two mics. The other one is by one of his ear microphones. I don't know if you can see it in there. And that allows him to pick up my voice coming through and it actually works, we've tested it, but I have yet to post anything where you can hear the audio through these versus just me yelling at the camera. This is a lot of extra cable. It will just snake behind him and go into his camelback. So this is pretty much a one helmet setup. It did take about a half hour to do. Um, that might just because we're really bad at setting things up, but I just, caution that this is not as easily transferable as the Senna headsets, which you can easily pull out with Velcro and transfer to another helmet if you want. The whole thing is removable. This, not so easily. And the recorder that attaches to those is right here. It was just called the Digital Voice Recorder on Amazon. Pretty cheap little guy. It just has the line in right there. So you plug that in here, um, you tell it line in, and it should be all set to go. It has 72 gigabytes of storage, so plenty of room for when you're out riding. I'll have to tell you guys later how easy it is to actually try and sync up and use the audio files from that recorder. Okay, so that is my basic setup. 
with everything that I use. I hope someone found this helpful in some way, and hopefully I'll get to test out that audio system soon and see what it sounds like.